हाउ हैप्पी यू आर वेन यू गिव फ्यूरेसमाइड टू योर पेशंट एंड योर पेशंट स्टार्ट फोरिंग यूरिन बट फ्रेंड्स दिस ड्रग इज नॉट हार्मलेस इफ यू डू नॉट यूज इट प्रॉपरली इट कैन बैक फायर एंड योर हैप्पीनेस विल टर्न इन टू सैडनेस हाय आई एम डॉक्टर सौरभ एंड इन टूडेज वीडियो आई एम गोइंग टू शेयर विथ यू सेवन पॉवरफुल क्लिनिकल टिप्स ऑन फ्यूरेसमाइड दैट आई हैव लर्न आफ्टर वर्किंग फॉर सेवरल इयर्स इन द वार्ड्स एंड द आई सी यू before starting this video i would like to tell you that if you have come for the first time on this channel then do subscribe this channel and if you are interested on the clinical scenario based mcqs then you can also check my memberships by clicking on the join button so friends let's start the video so the first tip is that whenever you are starting furosemide to any patient always check the volume status we always believe that pedal edema is equal to hypervolemia but this condition is not always correct in certain states like sepsis or cirrhosis the matter is different in sepsis there is capillary leak and in cirrhosis there is decreased albumin and these are the causes of edema but important thing is that in these patients the intravascular volume is low and if you give furosemide to this patient then these patients can land up into shock so before giving furosemide you have to check the volume status how can you check the volume status you can check the jvp of the patient if patient is having the central line then you can check the central venous pressure or if you have 2d echo then you can also check the ivc and on the basis of this you can check the volume status of the patient and decide whether to give furosemide or not now the second tip is that whenever there is an emergency always use iv route whenever you give this drug orally the onset of action is 30 to 60 minutes but whenever give this drug iv then the action starts in 5 minutes so when there is an emergency like pulmonary edema we always use intravenous route so now the third and the most important tip is that you have to monitor electrolytes very closely in a patient who is on furosemide what electrolyte imbalances are there when patient is on furosemide there can be hyponatremia there can be hypokalemia there can be hypocalcemia and there can also be hypomagnesemia of all these electrolyte imbalances hypokalemia is very important and you have to monitor this condition very closely especially in a patient who is on digoxin because the patient can land up in digoxin toxicity when there is hypokalemia now the fourth tip is that whenever there is a patient of ckd increased dose of this drug is required now what is the reason behind that we all know that furosemide acts on the loop of enle especially the thick part of the ascending limb of loop of enle so in a patient of ckd the blood flow to the kidney is reduced and hence the amount of drug reaching the tubules is also reduced and hence in a patient of ckd increased dose of drug is required and the fifth and the important tip is that always be aware of the ototoxicity this ototoxicity generally starts with tinnitus means there is ringing sound in the ear there can also be hearing loss generally this hearing loss is reversible if you detect it early and how this ototoxicity occurs it occurs when you give large single iv dose when it is generally more than 80 mg the risk of ototoxicity increases and when you give this drug as a rapid iv push 
especially during emergency we give this drug very rapidly and this can increase the chance of phototoxicity so always remember that whenever we require to give rapid drug to the patient always give it over 1 to 2 minutes and in certain conditions the risk of phototoxicity increases for example in a patient of renal failure the chance of ototoxicity is more and also in patients who are on aminoglycosides. Aminoglycosides are the, is the group of antibiotics and these antibiotics are also ototoxic. So whenever a patient is on aminoglycoside and you also add furosemide, the risk of ototoxicity increases. Now the sixth important tip is that watch for the drug interactions. There are four important drug interactions. First is digoxin. If there is hypokalemia due to furosemide, there can be digoxin toxicity. Second is with lithium. If patient is on lithium, then the serum levels of this drug can increase and it can lead to further problems like increased phototoxicity. If the patient is on NSAIDs, it decreases the efficacy of this drug. And if the patient is on ACE inhibitors, it can cause AKI if the patient is hypovolemic. So these are the four important drug reactions that you have to keep in mind. So the last but not the least is the timings of the dose. So what is it? This drug is given twice a day. And what is our routine practice? For example, if we give one dose at 9 a.m., generally we give second dose at 9 p.m. But in case of furosemide, this is different. For example, if you give the second dose of furosemide at 9 p.m., its action will start at 10 p.m. And what this will cause? This will cause nocturia. Means patient will have to wake up from the sleep frequently for the urine and this will cause sleep disturbances, daytime sleeping and the quality of life will be disturbed. And these patients who are on furosemide are especially the elderly patients or the patients having cardiac disease. And if these patients have to wake up frequently in the night, there can also be chances of fall. So in a patient who is not on any catheter, you have to give the second dose for around 4 p.m. So that by the time he goes to sleep, the action of furosemide is complete and he will have a sound sleep. So in summary, don't rely on the edema alone. Check for the signs of increased volume. Always use IV route in emergencies for quick action. Monitor electrolytes, especially the potassium. Higher doses may be required in a patient who is of CKD. Avoid ototoxicity. Always avoid large doses and rapid IV push. Be aware of certain drug interactions, especially the digoxin. And always give last dose or the second dose of the furosemide around 4 p.m. So friends, these were the important 7 clinical tips on furosemide that you can apply in your next prescription. If you found today's video helpful, give it a like, share with your friends. And if you have come for the first time on this channel, then do subscribe this channel for more such clinical insights. So friends, see you in the next video. Till then, thank you.